skill and talent can be developed through hard work, good strategies, persistence, dedication and input from others. Where focus goes, energy flows. So focus your energy on continuous learning and stop wasting time thinking about looking smart. Build resistance, build vulnerability, build courageousness and face adversity with a smile. Become comfortable with uncomfortable. You know, the only person that you need to prove anything to is you. Imperfect action trumps perfect inaction. Stop wasting time and get on with it. Failure is part of learning, so start learning by taking action. Listen, Lavolsi, it is Wednesday. It is the hot seat. How are you going? I'm good, Simone. I'm, I'm really, really good. You know, I had an amazing uh, wedding anniversary in uh, in Dalesford at the amazing Lake House. And, you know, yes, and happy I got some... first anniversary. That's exciting. Yes. A big yes. milestone. <laughs> it, is, it is the first wedding anniversary, but in May, it'll be 10 years that we've been together. Yeah. So... That's now, it's Lucy's prepping me for, for that moment. <laughs> is it still the anniversary then for, for the 10 years or do you only get wedding anniversaries from now on? Uh, hmm. I, I, I don't know. Um, the, boss will have to, <laughs> the boss will have to tell me how that's going to play out. But as you know, any excuse for me to play. So, um, you know, uh, but it was really good. I, I, I didn't get to see my children until today and, um, it was so good to see them. The dog won't talk to me. He's uh, he's pretty grumpy. Always becomes very snobbish when you go away. Yeah, my Not dog impressive. my dog is uh, gets really shitty and uh, lucky because I produced a pig's ear for him, and oh. uh, he didn't even say thank you. He literally walked off, and <laughs> Lucy looked at him and was like, "Oh, he's not happy." I'm like, "Yep, Louis, you're not <laughs> happy." Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, to everyone who enjoyed the long weekend, it's it throws me off every week. It does not feel like Wednesday today. And for all of those battling through school holidays, we're halfway here in New South Wales. I know in Victoria, school went back uh, Monday, so they are all excited to have their children back at school. But today we're talking all about recruitment and recruitment challenges specifically. So I'm excited to dive into this topic with you because I know this is something we talk about often with our clients. This is what I'm hearing in a lot of our business circles. So I'm really keen to jump in this into this topic today. So let's get going. My first question for you today, Christian, is what factors do you prioritize when you're searching and recruiting for top talent in your organization? What are the important things to be looking for to be doing? All right. Uh, okay. So when searching for recruitment, or let's let's be specific when 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 searching for A players, right? Um, yeah. Some of the things that you should prioritize: 100% culture fit. Okay. So. What I mean by that is the alignment of the company values with the values of the individual. Uh, alignment doesn't mean same, okay? Mm. Uh, team compatibility is the next thing in that area. Uh, I also look for their potential and growth mindset. That is their willingness to learn um, and also other future leaders. Um, mm. Now, remember, not everyone is a leader, and that's great. You, you need you need soldiers to win a war, yeah. okay? Um Motivation and drive is another thing, another big factor that we look for and we advise our clients to look for. So passion, mm. self-motivation, all of those things, um, because that's what you know gets them to, to think innovatively uh, as well. Mm. Adaptability and resilience is a key factor. Um, we also look at cognitive abilities, right? So critical thinking, problem-solving skills, uh, the ability to handle complex scenarios um, mm. are really essential because these are the roles of the future, okay? Yeah. Because it all comes down to decision-making. And remember, your circumstances, right, uh, do not define you. The decisions you make define you. So mm. uh, diversity inclusion is also something that we 
consider uh, we we consider their location and their flexibility. You know, a lot of employers uh, believe that they need to be the flexible people. No, it's it's a it's a two way road. Um, yeah. And we also look for any um, uh, unexplained employment gaps. So we look for the red flags. That's another factor. Um, things like technological proficiency and skill set is really down the bottom. We are big believers that anyone can learn. Now, obviously, if you're looking for a computer engineer, you can't hire a uh, you know a cleaner who's never done any computer engineering. Okay, so you know people always yeah. get a little bit confused, and 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 you know, and and that's really it. You know, we 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 compensation expectations, but yeah, they're they're the critical factors. You know, that culture fit and motivation. And I'm just going to add a little side question to this then. Is this what you're asking in an interview scenario or are you giving them sort of some sort of testing phase to an a- analyze this or are you, are you doing all the work in the background like stalking them on all their social platforms? Like how are you actually finding out this information? Most of the time um, if I'm doing senior people um, and I'll yeah. often as a, as a chairman of boards, I normally have mm. a lot of influence in who the CEO is going to be um, with yeah. with you know, with other board members. So at that level, I'm I'm really just paying attention. We do have mm-hmm. some qualitative and quantitative approaches. Um, but the big one is that we, you know, I'm really paying attention. I've seen enough bullshitters in my life that you kind of work them out. Um, and yeah. so I, you know, I, we, well, we, we uh, deploy for senior roles, very long format interviews, sometimes four hours. Um, wow. And the reason is, yeah. And the, re- and the reason for that is because um, most people can't bullshit you for that long. So, yeah, okay. you you know, and I'll, I'll never forget, I, when I, one of my interviews is a 21-year-old um, when I went into the investment banking environment, private equity, uh, was a one-hour interview that then led into eight hours of drinking whiskey um, in a hotel <laughs> lobby bar in Singapore. Uh, and... I didn't realize that I was being interviewed for that whole hour, eight, whole eight hours. Um, wow. I thought that was them just getting to know me. And that is the strategy for recruiting, um, you know, interns into the organization. One, back then, 25 years ago, can they drink sustainably and not <laughs> act like dickheads at the end? Um, and yeah. also, you, you're much more relaxed. So you, your views yeah. come through. So... Um, it's it's a great it's called a great top grading interview, um, and yeah. uh, and so that's what we do for senior roles. For obviously for other roles, we we don't go to that level. But uh, the the first area is always around uh, culture fit. If the, if the, someone's yeah. not a fit, they're not going to last longer than two weeks. Come on, imagine working in our organization if you didn't have the alignment in values. Um, yeah, you wouldn't last. You know, and yeah, you know, early on in my career, that got really hard. It was really hard to find the right people. As you get better at finding them, right, then you inevitably get better at keeping them. So recruitment yeah. is also your retention strategy. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. All right, let's move on to our second question. I need to stop with the little sub questions I'm asking because I keep blowing out. It's my fault that these interviews are blowing out. All right, question two. So how important is the employer's brand or the company's brand and reputation in attracting and retaining top talent. Do you think that people who are looking to join organizations, do they care about the brand and the reputation of the company? Do you think that's a factor for them? Look, I think some people have so much ego and vanity that they would care. Um, Mm. And, that's not really the kind of people we want to attract. But let's yeah. flip that. I actually do believe that employer brands and their reputation plays a critical role in not only attracting, but also retaining talent. So I want to go mm-hmm. down that path, right? Um, yeah. And, and this is something we spend a lot of time with our clients doing because you can't grow 20, 30% year on year if you don't have an excellent talent pool to draw from and an excellent yeah. internal leadership pool to bring up the ladder, right? So yeah. let's break that down into attracting talent first. And 
you need to be top of mind, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to attract the top talent, you need to be top of mind. You yeah. need to have that competitive edge. What's your unique selling proposition? I mean, you know, a lot of people want to come and work with me, as you know, and, and mm -hmm. I'm a limited resource. I'm one person. So we've built group coaching programs and they're going really well. But, you know, not everyone can afford to be inside of Evolve. So we then mm -hmm. went and built customers on demand. But, but all of them are at different stages. And in customers on demand, we talk a lot about attraction, right? Yeah. You know, and we talk about developing your unique sales points. You know, people come to us and like, I need your marketing brain, Christian. I know you're in a marketing company. Mate, you just need to learn the fundamental basics, right? Yeah. Of consumer behavior, of marketing behavior, of the mediums at your disposal. You know, and, and mm -hmm. I don't care which part of the um your your which part of your business journey you're at, ninety nine percent of business owners are not marketers. Yeah. Right? They're not marketers. They don't they, they're normally experts in something or passionate about something. And we it, learn it, that part fast when we start businesses yeah. and they were like, we wanted to teach something or sell a product of some description. Now we need to be marketers and salespeople and all the rest. But here's the problem. They go out looking for the magic pill and they pay, you know, th you know some people start at $10, $100 and they become junkies, like freaking drug addicts. And then they start buying a $2,000 program, $5,000. And then they put everything into one bucket and they go, it's all the same. Yes, it's all the same because these people are teaching the same shit. None of them actually know the foundations, right? Yeah. You know, I look at half of these guys that have got all these courses and they're doing superbly well. And, I, and I'm so grateful for them because they take all the people I don't want, right? And what it does, and this is what I'm talking about, attracting talent. Attracting talent, ladies and gentlemen, is not just about attracting people to work for you. It's about attracting the clients you want. And that's mm. what we went and taught in COD. And what is some of the feedback we get all the time? I've never had to think so hard in my life. And yeah. these are people that now, you know, it's a 12-week course with a mastermind that people can stay into if we allow them. Yeah, you know, as you know, you know, we allow them. It's uh, once you okay, we'll let you pay a little fee each month to stay in the program. And those people, some people have been in there twelve months, and now they're doing twenty two grand, thirty grand a month revenue. Yeah, and they attribute their success to staying in that zone, in that pain, learning the fundamentals before mm -hmm. execution. Yeah, right. And you know, nothing easy. Right, no, no, nothing worthwhile doing comes easy, right? You know, and and I think that's really important. So again, you know, it's about you having that competitive edge. It's also about um, the quality of applicants, really filtering them through, being more specific. That will also help you if you've got a strong brand. And also, mm. when you've got positive worth of word of mouth, right, and an online presence, that um, gives you a broader reach. Okay. Now, in terms yeah. of retaining talent, right, it's about the employee engagement. You know, we have some clients in the media company who we don't even have to tell employees to go and engage on the social platforms. They do it willingly. They share because they're so interconnected. They are the brand. And this is the point I make. You know, you don't build brands. Your people do, right? Yeah. It's... um. You know, you're the lonely nut that starts the movement, but it's your first follower that takes you to the next level, right? Yeah. And the first follower never gets the credit, but mm. it's the, second, the third and fourth and the fifth, and then you get momentum and it's spectacular, right? Yeah. So, you know, this is the other thing around retention. If you got a great brand that's built by the people for the people, guess what happens? You retain more clients, but you also yeah. reduce your turnover and employees, which means you have a reduced impact on recruitment, okay? Yeah. You develop what we call employee advocacy, right? Mm -hmm. And you have a higher rate of productivity because you have corporate alignment. Yeah. I get really passionate about this because this is, you know, people always say, Christian, what do you do? This is just one of the things that I do. We focus yeah. on people, right? Yeah. You know, we have four pillars, you know, people, strategy, execution, and cash. And cash comes last. Yeah. But it doesn't mean we don't teach cash at the beginning. Mm. You know, and I get really inspired by this stuff, Simone. You know, like, it's amazing what three days off can do to me, right? But I get <laughs> inspired by this because it's about having focus. And Tony Robbins says, where focus goes, energy flows. Yeah. Right? You know, and you know that we've got this 10, 10, 100. 
concept mm. running. I'm not going to share that one here. That's our secret, right? But it's yeah. something that came to me in a meditation and we just, that's it, bang. And we're aligning everything and everyone to it. And the results are pouring in. But why? Yeah. Because we do people, we do strategy, we do execution, and we do cash really well. Mm. Right? And that's how you build market dominating competitor crushing strategies. So again, yes. they all apply here. Um, mm. You know, some of the, the other things. It be a very costly exercise, right? People don't realize yeah. this. It's not just the ads that you spend on and all of these kinds of things. It's your turnover of staff that could be really eating into your cash. Ads? I mean, <clears throat> we use, for our clients, we use Seek only yeah. as a secondary mechanism to attract the right people. Mm -hmm. Right? We'll go and put up billboards with a complex yeah. formula for engineering firms to go and solve. We're only looking for one or two of the best. See, people don't understand. Marketing is a recruitment function. Yeah. Right? Marketing is a recruitment function. Mm -hmm. Right? You don't mark, you don't recruit, <clears throat> you market all year round to recruit. It's a 360 yeah. degree approach. You need mm. to have a talent pool available anytime. We use LinkedIn. We have specialized LinkedIn VAs in our outsourcing company that are trained and skilled to do this for clients. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, again, we have developed strategies that work for us and now we offer them to the world and we keep most of this shit a secret. Like only a handful of people that are watching this now are getting to know this. And, you know, four people. It's like I say to our marketing company, or you guys, you have said it. Christian is yes. like the hidden treasure that the world yeah. needs to know exists. I mean, I was listening to Tim Ferriss and it blew my mind. My wife was in the car. She never listens to this stuff. And she was listening to it with me and three different podcasts. And she looks at me and I said, what's the matter? She goes, she goes, you say exactly the same things as these people. And I said, yeah. And one of those people was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right? Like, it's like, you know, we cut from the same cloth. Right? Yeah, and I don't, and and that's a, you know, I hadn't listened to Tim Ferriss podcast in a while because I just mm. haven't at the time. But we drove to Dalesford from Adelaide, so I had six and a half hours of commute. You know, on the way there, we spoke and we talked and we caught up. On the way back, it's like okay, <laughs> kick her out of the car. No, not at all. Right, well, like, Christian, <laughs> you shut up. Right, so yeah. so the, you know, I guess what I'm saying to you is, you know, it's so hard when you have done things over. I mean, I'm a veteran of 80 companies that mm. I have co-founded, founded, invested in. You know, there are people that have done way more than that. You know, I've had huge success and huge failure. But yeah. you learn every single time. And something that Arnie said that blew me away, and I, I, and I can't quote exactly, but this is how I interpret it. You're better off at failing at something really, really difficult mm. than winning at something easy. Right? Yeah. Because you're not going to grow. And I just, he didn't say that. But for me, and that's when Lucy looked at me and she went, oh, my God. Like, mm. you, A, she said to me, I didn't realize Arnold Schwarzenegger was such a smart man. Yeah. I said, man, he was the governor of Australia, a uh, governor of California. Australia, yeah. Right? But to <laughs> give you an insight, he was one of the first investors in pop art. Right? Mm. So he was buying $30,000 Campbell's tin can paintings, Warhol, those paintings are worth $15 million today. He's yeah. got like tons of it. Andy Warhol was one of his friends yeah, and wow. a big advocator for him. So, you know, you go, this guy, and if you listen to it, he built his own path. That's mm. recruitment. I know it sounds like we're, we're off on a, on a tangent, but we're not. Because yeah. if, you're, if you're worrying about your brand and your reputation, you only you don't have to be liked by everyone. You know, when we write strategies for people, we intentionally write strategies that alienate 95% of the market. Yeah. Right? Because none of you have that much money to go and attract yeah. the whole world. Okay. Yeah. But the reality of it is if you can capture five percent of the right people to buy your product and to be your employees and your clients, you're winning. Mm. That's, that's a lot to take in and some really important lessons there. And I think for anyone out there listening who's just popping up the seek ads or, you know, doing that one-off post on their social media, trying to find the right people to come and join their organization, there's lots of key takeaways you can 
grab from this hot seat episode to um, up the ante and find the right people for you. All right, we actually pro- have probably answered more than three questions, but I have one more. And I just wanted to ask quickly, what strategies could you use to stand out as an attractive employer? Like, you what love, could you, what could you do? You love, I, I think I've given away enough value today uh, to the <laughs> to the four or five people. And thank you, bless you, love you that you <laughs> that you've stayed on with us. Um, um, you know, don't forget to drop a comment and let us know that you're here. If you're watching it on replay, yeah. obviously, let us know. Um, it's going to come a time where I just decided I don't want to do these anymore. Um, <laughs> so, you know, you might have to keep a library of them. But um, well, maybe next week, because this is actually episode 51 of the hot seat. So next year, next week is like our one year anniversary. One year anniversary. Pop the champagne. <laughs> right. Um, so, look. Standing out as, as an attractive employer, okay, it yeah. requires a combination of actual tangible benefits as well as a positive workplace culture, but more importantly, a clear and compelling vision, okay? Yeah. So I always like to look at things like work-life balance, you know, um, can you can you have flexible scheduling? Um, what's your career development? I hinted that earlier, you know, yeah. what's your training and education, your clear career pathways, uh, positive workplace culture. So what do I mean by that? You know, inclusivity, open communication, closing the feedback loop, recognition and reward programs. You know, um, Mm. what about actually employee wellbeing programs, you know, around uh, mental and physical health, Um, you know, really huge at the moment. Uh, Engaging work environments, you know, what are your facilities like? You know, are they, you know, is your office a little shithole in a corner? And you're trying mm. to sit ten people in there, right? Um, you know, what's it like? Is there lots of space? Put plants, put greenery in there. Ask people to contribute, be part of it, right? Yeah. What are the tools and techs? You know, what about you know strong employer branding? You know, what's your online presence like? What's your company reputation like? Um, mm. The big one, empowerment and autonomy. You know, um, have you got the practices in place to empower your people and let them loose? Let them be creative. Let them be innovative. Let them feel like they're contributing at a much higher level, right? Um, you know, things like employee benefits and perks, they come right down the list when mm. the A players are looking for things. It's a and given. And that's often what you see at the top, right? It's the ads about what the expectations are from the employer. This is what we want you to have, your essential criteria and then your desired criteria. And very rarely is there anything about the actual organization. It'll be, you know, your, your one liner or your bit of a company spiel at the top, but it's not painting the picture that you're talking about here. No. And I think the other, the, the real big one for me is we spend so much time recruiting and then we bring them in and we go, oh, you're a really good A player. So just go for it. Onboarding, effective onboarding, deep mm. entrenched onboarding. And I, and I, I've made so many mistakes in this area and I still do. And you know, and now I'm like waking up to the fact, hang on a minute, I've just been really lucky that everyone just wants to stay, right? So yeah. why, let's go retrain everyone. Let's go re- re-onboard people. You know, you invest $100,000 recruiting someone and then you expect them to hit the ground running because you've sunk all this money. Mm. Spend less recruiting, look for the A players and invest a month in them learning. Yeah. Right? And then... Let them loose, and they'll they'll give you double the return. I've seen it, right? Now, Simone, mm-hmm. I actually have to go because I have a I have a call in one minute. I've just realised. Thank you for your time and your insights. I love Jem packing as many hardcore facts as we can into these quick amount of time. It's not that long until you're going to be back in Sydney, and I'm super pumped for that. In December, you'll be over here for our Evolve Mastermind group as well. So thank you for your time and your insights as always. We'd love to hear a hashtag live, hashtag replay if you're watching this. Share your insights on recruitment and your challenges. We'd love to hear from you. Awesome. Thanks, Simone. And everyone, thank you very much. Working with Christian is a game changer. Hi, I'm Adrian Lee from GrowthLink Coaching and Consulting. I started working with Christian in August 2020 as his LinkedIn growth consultant. We worked together on his LinkedIn brand for about 12 months before becoming business partners in Growth Outsourced late 2021. Christian is a hidden genius. He helped me break through a significant financial target, 
by restructuring my growth consulting online business offer. I don't know of any one person who can give you so much focus, clarity, and structure to live your purpose and get shit done. He holds you accountable to your words and gives you the tough love when you need it. I love his no BS approach to business and life. Everyone needs a Christian Lavolsi in their life. Do whatever you have to.